so today's project was to get all of the torque converter bolts in uh i never live checked the starter so in order to go from the 4l60 to the 4l80 i had to use a special spacer and a special flex plate i never checked like the clearancing between the starter and the uh the flywheel the flex plate the gear and uh, I was very unsure of how to put it on. So uh, I just put the torque converter bolts in. You're supposed to have an eighth inch of gap when the torque converter is all the way in the transmission. So when you put the bolts in, it'll pull it out that eighth of an inch. I had that, so I didn't really think there was any issue there. I went to put the starter, well, I wired the starter up to the battery. And uh, as soon as I hit it, it just, you know, made a grinding noise. So that was this starter here. I got that out of the junkyard. I'm like, well, maybe there's a possibility that it's just, uh, you know, something's different about it. So I looked up the part number from the one off of a 6.0 with a 4L80 and the one from like the 4.853 and a 4L60 and the part number was different. So uh, I went out to my work truck and snatched the one off of that because that's a 6.0 4L80. And I just tried it and uh, it's just zing, you know, it's not grabbing the gear. So I'm going to set the GoPro up underneath with some light and hopefully we can see what this gear is doing. I'm going to use the camera as a tool and uh, I can see if it's a spacing problem or if the Bendix isn't popping out or what's going on. So let me put you under there and let's see what happens. So I got online, was just doing some research, finding out what other people's problems were. Um, they just said shim it, you know, although these weren't really designed to be shimmed. I did have to drill another hole, which, uh, thank God I have this drill press. I used the 1 16th shim. It was the biggest shim that was in this pack. And uh, now she turns over just fine. Let's give her a whirl. Uh, can you see the shim down in there? There she be. Alrighty. So, here's my signal wire. Perfect. So, uh, normally at this stage I would put oil in it and prime it. However, because of the issue that I was dealing with here, I've got the oil feed line to the turbo undone, so I didn't want it spitting oil out, you know. But, uh, I'm going to switch these valve covers around, put all this back together, and then I'll put some oil in it and prime it, and uh, we'll be ready for the next thing. Alrighty, I got a few key things done. I've got the, uh, uh, show me, show me, show me, the dipstick down there. So from me bending, can I get this down here so you can see? From me bending the dipstick, to fit in this, it shortened up a little bit, which means the O-ring on the, the little flange didn't seat all the way into the block. So I put a bunch of uh, yellow, or not yellow, uh, gray, ultra gray silicone on like an inch further down. And when I put this in, I made sure I didn't touch nothing. I went very carefully and stuck it in. So now it's where it needs to be. Uh, I got to keep in mind that the dipstick is a little higher. So like, the, you know, the lines on the dipstick, uh, full would actually be like over full, but it's a Chevy. I don't think it'll care. Uh, the other thing I did was uh, swap these valve covers around. So I got my fill back there now. And uh, what we're going to do right now, I figure I'd turn the camera on and just let it go. So remember I said this is the uh, oil feed line to the turbo. Um, and I've got everything set up to where I can crank the engine over. I'm going to fill the engine with oil and then I'm going to crank it up till oil comes out of here. That's part of like the priming procedures. So, um, you know, I don't think it'll build enough pressure to fill the lifters, but at least I'll be at a spot where once I get everything together and I'm ready to start it, I just got to remember to stop and finish priming it before I start it. If that makes sense. If I figure I'd let the camera go, I'm going to fill the oil up and, uh, Prime it. I gotta find a spot to put the camera. Oh, no. how about on top of the flashlight? There we go. Hopefully, I don't bump it. So, we're just doing uh, five gallons of uh, 5W20. This is non synthetic. Um, 
although I, the only new bearings in this engine are cam bearings and there's really nothing that needs to be like broken in um, I'm still going to uh, you know use the kind of oil they recommend for a break in I never checked to see if the drain plugs tight Find out one way or another, huh? I can deal with this. I was going to leave this on the other side, I was like, ah, you know, I, like, I could change the oil whenever, but, you know, if I'm out one night running this thing hard and I lose a significant amount of oil, I'm not going to want to be messing with that while it's hot. Alright, we'll give that a minute to go down. Fresh oil is always hard to see on a dipstick. We're at the very tip of this dipstick. That's not good. Probably takes six quarts instead of five to fill it. This pan is off of the Hummer. I'll wait a minute and check it again. Let it all settle to the drain pan. I'm going to check this uh, plug. Oh. All right, plug's tight. I didn't have to worry about that. Let's check the oil level again. Yeah, it's right on the tip. So I'm going to put another quart or so in. Okay, dial in one more cord on this thing. And what I mean by that is, uh, on this brand anyhow, this is like their store brand for AutoZone. They put this little line here. They have leader on this side and quartz on this side, which you know, leader is slightly bit more than quart. I think they're putting this on here to uh, get us used to seeing leader because one day quartz is going to go away and we're never going to use it again. So uh, anyway, this was empty. I took it from my other container and just filled it up to here and then I just dumped that in so I didn't have to guess at it. Now I know I have six quartz in. So let's check this uh, level again. So we're at the midway point. That's fine. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to get a cup. Let me find a cup. Here we are. Put this cup right here. So this is the idea. I'm going to run the engine until oil comes out of this. But i got to find a place. 
that this wants to actually sit. There we go. All right, and by run the engine, I mean crank it over with the starter. I'm not actually going to start the engine. I'm nowhere near ready to start the engine. Okay. Make sure I can see this thing. Of course, it doesn't want to sit in a way where I can see it. Uh, let me take the... Uh, funnel out because the funnel is sitting on the rocker arm I don't think it would do any damage it's just sitting there you know idling well not idling but cranking is like uh, I don't know 200 rpm or so I gotta charge this battery back up too all right here we go all right It's taken a really long time to prime. I either got a huge mess underneath this truck or it just hasn't primed yet. No mess. Let's check the oil level again. Yeah, she's still about uh, where I had it before. Well, let's keep going. Finally, holy crap, that took forever. She's finally primed. Good God. All right, we'll let that sit for a few minutes. I'm going to check the oil level again. Let's just check and make sure nothing's spitting oil out where it shouldn't be coming out of. Let's look underneath of it. She's dry under here. Man, that took forever. Yep, she's still dripping. That's awesome. That's awesome. Good deal. Check this oil level again. Now that it's filled the filter, which I dented the crap out of uh, putting this engine in and out. There ain't nothing on that stick. Nothing. Let's let her sit a few minutes and uh, check it again. She might be a seven quart oil pan, huh?
All right, so all we're waiting for is the oil to come down from the heads back into the oil pan. It's still on the very tip. Yep, let's add another quart. Let me wipe this off. So we're at six quarts, I'm going to be adding a seventh quart. So the next thing is going to be, uh, I got to do the transmission lines, the transmission cooler. There you go. Um, I got to fill the transmission up. Uh, I'm still, can you see that? I'm still, I'm right here. I'm not even at the halfway mark. So seven, uh, let's, uh, let's gauge it again, that's seven quarts. Right there, that's halfway, can you see that? That's halfway, um, I'm going to leave it like that for now. You got to keep in mind, I spit a little bit out into this cup. And, uh, you know, once I get it running and get it up to temperature, uh, we'll shut it off and check it then, but that won't be for a while yet. Uh, all right, I'm going to shut this off here and this little part. I'm going to put the turbo on, actually put a gasket in and bolt it down. Um, I still have to finish my up pipe because that's still screwed up. So I'm going to work on that, but um, I'll get this video uploaded to you guys, and uh, we've accomplished something else today. Awesome. Awesome.